It seems there's a case of conflicting views at the ECB at the moment, and you're probably thinking, yeah, tell me something new. And once again, it's between the head of the ECB and the president of the German Bundesbank, shock horror. So on Friday, Jens Wiedmann, the Bundesbank president, came out saying, given the considerable uncertainty about the inflation outlook, monetary policy should not commit to its current very expansionary stance for too long. But just a few hours before that, Christine Lagarde, the head of the ECB, as I told you on Friday, had already said, we must not rush into a premature tightening when faced with passing or supply-driven inflation shocks. Friedman is due to step down as president in December, which is many years before his term was meant to end, and part of this is apparently due to his frustration and objection to ECB policies, and I think this is a case in point. Friedman believes the inflation rate may take longer to decline than the ECB is currently projecting, and he feels that monetary policy needs to start being normalised. So the Eurozone obviously has a very tricky history with low inflation over the past decade, so it seems that now they might be being extra cautious now that they're seeing inflation moving up and they're not wanting to act too soon. However, he also made a good point in saying, central banks will come increasingly under pressure from governments and financial markets to keep monetary policy expansionary for longer than the rationale of price stability would call for. The issue we discussed last week was how there's now a divergence between major central banks like the Bank of England and the Federal Reserve and the actions of the ECB. The ECB is obviously falling behind in terms of looking to tighten their policy. At the moment, it's expected that they'll say next month that they're ending their 1.85 trillion euro bond buying program in March next year, but that might not actually affect the markets too much as they'll probably step up their long-standing asset purchase program at the same time instead. Now, that bond buying matters for their potential interest rate rises because they've said they won't raise rates until they stop buying bonds. So the market expects that the first rate rise won't happen until early 2023, so we're much, much further back than the other major central banks that we've been looking at. However, on Thursday this week, we do have the ECB meeting minutes being released, and that's definitely one of the releases this week that you should keep an eye on. It'll be important to see whether there are any clues about them potentially speeding up the timeline for all of this. Although I'd say since Lagarde has been very vocal publicly about not doing anything too soon, I don't think anyone will expect any action any sooner for now. At the same time, we have the issue of COVID cases in Europe on the rise and the news about Austria on Friday. The euro last week was hammered from all angles, and although EURUSD seems to have stalled at Wednesday's low, at least at the time of filming this, it does seem there could be enough momentum to push through that level. Then there's a really strong long-term path of resistance around 1.12 that we can see from the monthly point of view. So I'm holding off for now, but I may jump in if we reach that level. Meanwhile, Euro Japanese Yen has been showing some great bearish structure, and I want to say a massive well done to Dan Brown last week, having one of his best trades so far on the pair. He left a comment on our Friday video. So what markets are you following this week? Let me know in the comments down below, and do hit the thumbs up button if you find these updates useful or interesting. Also, keep an eye out for the other two updates we've released today about the Bank of England and the US Federal Reserve. Thanks for watching. Take care. I'll see you soon.